Now, what about the woman in Mark 5 who had what the Bible calls an issue of blood? That means that she was bleeding and she had gone, she had spent all that she had on doctors and was no better at all. Now, I think that would be pretty discouraging. But she heard about Jesus. And maybe somebody brought you tonight and you're just now hearing about Jesus. Or maybe you accidentally run into this program on your TV and you're just now hearing about Jesus. She heard that Jesus was in the neighborhood and the Bible says that she pressed through the great throng of people that surrounded him. Jesus was almost being suffocated with people. How's this woman going to get through? She wouldn't give up. And I love what the Amplified Bible says. She kept saying to herself, <laughs> if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I shall be healed. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I shall be healed. Now, her healing was a physical healing, but there's also emotional healings and spiritual healings and mental healings, healing of relationships. I mean, there's nowhere that we hurt that God can't heal us. And while we're talking about healing, I want to take a moment and do this right now. I felt earlier during the worship that God wanted to heal people tonight that have migraine headaches. And so... I kind of thought I forgot, but now I know I didn't forget. I think God wanted me to wait so the TV audience could be included. And so if you've suffered with migraine headaches, I want you to just stand up, and I'm going to pray for you tonight. Come on, if you have a problem with migraine headaches, okay. And all of you in the TV audience dare to believe. You say, well, I've taken every kind of medicine. I've done everything imaginable. I mean, I've done everything. Nobody can help me. Well, I'll tell you what. When everything else fails, Jesus can work. And maybe you've been prayed for a thousand times, but I'm going to pray for you again. Amen? And we're going to dare to believe together that you can be healed. And there's probably even people in here right now tonight with, with migraine headache. You know, when you have migraines, I know because I had them for 10 years. When you have migraine headaches, you learn to just keep functioning with them. And you're just used to that pain in the one side of your head if that's where you get it. So we're going to believe God. Okay? Father, I thank you tonight that you're still our healer. Jesus, you not only took our sin, but you took our sicknesses. And maybe some people are not even used to this kind of thing. They're not even accustomed to somebody praying for them to be healed. But in your name, Jesus, we take authority over headaches, migraine headaches, cluster headaches. And I pray that pain will leave people's bodies right now and that they will no longer suffer with these migraine headaches. In Jesus' name, amen. Be healed. Amen. All right. Now, it's just that simple, and what we want you to do is write us a little letter or email us and say, I received my healing. I'm so excited I can hardly stand it. And then be sure you tell somebody else. Amen. And the next time, you, if, you, if you ever start to get a headache symptom again, you just say, I believe that God is working in my body right now. Amen? Remember, sometimes it takes a little time. Miracles come like that. Healings take some time. So don't give up your faith. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. John 11:40 is one of my favorite scriptures. It's when Jesus was about to raise Lazarus from the dead. And in John 11:40 he said, "Only believe and you will see the glory of God." How simple is that? Only believe and you will see the glory of God. You're going to believe something. It might as well be for God to help you. Amen? Amen? All right. Raise your level of expectancy. Start expecting more from God than what you ever have before. Right away, somebody says, well, what if I get disappointed? Well, the Bible says that 
God says, in me, you'll never be disappointed or put to shame. Now, let me explain. That doesn't mean that you're always going to get everything you want. So there may be some temporary setbacks, but in the end, you're going to look back and say, you know what? God knew what he was doing all along. I mean, I've had many, many, many hard times in my life, but I certainly cannot stand here tonight and say that I feel one ounce of disappointment over serving God these last 40 years of my life. Amen. Amen. No matter how challenging it is, it's still the best offer that we have. <laughs> Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, for good and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Isn't that good? Everybody say, God's got a good plan for me. <laughs> now, in Proverbs 15, 15, the Bible says, anxious thoughts and evil forebodings make all of our days miserable. Proverbs 15, 15, all the days of the desponding and the afflicted are made evil by anxious thoughts and evil foreboding. What is an evil foreboding? Well, I didn't know what it was until God had to teach me. Because of all the bad things that had happened to me in my life, and actually when I was a young woman in my 20s, I couldn't ever remember being happy. That's pretty sad. I didn't ever get to be a child. I had my childhood stolen through abuse and fear and alcoholism. And all the things that you go through when you live in the house with somebody that is so dysfunctional. And hurting people hurt people, so, you know, that doesn't excuse my father for what he did, but he was all messed up too. So at least I finally did find out that hating him wasn't going to help me or him. But because of all those years of having a bad experience, I had come to expect another bad experience and another bad experience. Does anybody in the house know what I'm talking about? You have so many bad things happen, so many disappointments, so many tragedy, so much bad news that you just, you're, you just kind of just fearfully wait for the next thing that's going to happen. So one day I was looking in the mirror, putting on my makeup, combing my hair, and I could feel like this pressure in my atmosphere. You know, a lot of things that we put up with for a lot of our life, when we really have a walk with God and the Holy Spirit's working in our life, we begin to notice things and question things that we just put up with before. <laughs> and so I had had that feeling as long as I could remember, but I never one time asked God what it was. And that morning I was really like frustrated with it and I said, God, what is this? And I heard in my spirit evil forebodings, but I didn't know what that was. And then because God is God, it wasn't very long after that, and I accidentally ran across Proverbs 15, 15. <laughs> All your days <laughs> are made miserable through anxious thoughts and evil forebodings. And I came to realize that the, those evil forebodings were actually a hope that something bad was going to happen. It was like an expectancy that something bad was going to happen. And so I had had so much of that that I was afraid to really believe for something good because I thought I'd just be disappointed again, but I could either step out in faith and try God's way or I could just live in eternal disappointment. So I'm asking you tonight to dare to believe that there's nothing in your life that God can't change. He's not going to do it overnight. I mean, he may, but, you know, that'd be great if he does, but... I, I'm here to preach the gospel, not tell you fairy tales. And I believe the truth is, is that when you hook up with Jesus, your worst day with him will be better than your best day ever was without him. Because no matter what you don't have, you will have him. And no matter what you go through, you won't have to go through it alone. So it's still the best thing that we've got. Now, here's why it's so important to be aggressive in expecting something good. And see, the thing I like about hope is you don't have to wait to feel hopeful. You can decide to be hopeful. 
every day now I say, something good is gonna happen to me today. And something good is gonna happen through me today. Every day I say, something good is gonna happen to me today. And you know, I, I expected to get the look that I got. And no, I'm not gonna let that just go over your head. Every day you should say, I am expecting something good to happen to me today. Why? Because God is good. Not because you're good, because God is good. But don't stop there. Also say, and I'm expecting something good to happen through me today. Because I don't wanna just be blessed, I wanna be a blessing to other people because I have found out it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Isaiah 30, 18 is just mm, one of the most yummy scriptures in the Bible. Okay, now are you ready for this? You wanna pay attention to this. And therefore the Lord earnestly waits, expecting, looking, and longing to be gracious to you, which means to be good to you. God is waiting <laughs> to be good to you. Okay, now listen. Therefore, he lifts himself up that he might have mercy on you and show loving kindness to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are all those who earnestly wait for him, <laughs> who expect and look and long for him, for his grace, for his victory, his favor, his love, his peace, his joy, and his matchless, unbroken companionship. So here, if I can just make this really simple for you, God is waiting, looking, longing to find somebody to be good to. And he can only be good to somebody who's looking and longing and expecting him to be good to them. So if I were you, I'd get up every morning and say, here I am. I don't deserve it, God, but I am expecting something good to happen to me today. Another thing I like to say is I'm expecting good news. I don't know about you, but I just am fed up with bad news. <laughs> I love it if I get a text message and somebody says, I've got good news. Or if somebody calls me and says, I've got good news. We need to share good things with people. And we need to ask God for good news every day. Hey, guess what, Mom? Your kid's getting an A in that class she failed in last year. Hey, guess what? Henry didn't go out and get drunk Friday night. He came home. No offense if your name is Henry. Good news, my gas bill went down. Good news, I got a 20% off discount coupon for that and didn't even know it was available. We need to make a big deal out of the good stuff. Psalm 27, 13 and 14, David said, what, what, what exclamation mark, what exclamation mark would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Now you know why I like this? It doesn't say when I die and go to heaven. I'm expecting lots of good things there, and frankly, I can't wait to get there. I think it's gonna be really an awesome place. I will be so glad to be rid of my body. <laughs> Calories don't count in heaven. Yeah, amen. We're talking about having a transformed life and having a transformed life must be preceded by having a transformed mind. If you wanna have what God wants you to have, you have to learn to think like God thinks. Amen? Amen. And you know, I've got so much teaching on the mind because there's no area that we have more problems with than our mind. 
Amen? So first you have to learn that you can do your own thinking. And then you need to learn how to recognize when you're not thinking right and how to cast those down and choose something better. But those are all lessons that I really don't have the time to get into tonight. If you don't know anything about these kind of things, I suggest my book, Battlefield of the Mind. It gives you, it lays a really good foundation about these things. Matter of fact, we had a doctor tell us tonight, she didn't tell us, she told Mike. She said, in my medical practice, she's an MD, she said, one of the things I prescribe is battlefield of the mind. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> How many even physical problems do we have because we don't think right? Amen? Let me tell you something. I can give myself a really bad headache, and it don't take very long if I just let my mind get full of worry and junk and fear. And... Amen? Surely you're familiar with Romans 12 too. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind. So transformation doesn't happen without having transformation in our mind. So if this is all new to you and you're kind of like, man, I've never heard this before, or I don't know what I think of this. Just start paying attention to what you're thinking. Think about what you're thinking about. <laughs> and the next time you get all down and discouraged, think about what you're thinking about. The next time you want to go rip somebody's head off, think about what you're thinking about. <laughs> Amen? Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I like to say where the mind goes, a man follows. If you think about a hot fudge sundae long enough, you'll go get one. Your mind went to the ice cream store a long time ago, and your body will get there. <laughs> I mean, am I right? It's amazing to me how I, somebody can say chocolate or ice cream and then you just I just can't stand it <laughs> Romans 8 6 is a really great scripture it says the mind of the flesh is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit and it ministers death so I might look at myself, maybe I, maybe I looked at myself 40 years ago and the problems I had, the mess my mind was in, how I felt physically, our finances, my family, my background, and I'm sure that it was very difficult in the beginning for me to look at all that and think about all that and think someday this is all going to be totally, completely changed. You know why? Because if we think with the mind of the flesh, then we think according to sense and reason. It's not reasonable to think that somebody who denied Christ three times could ever be used by God again. And I love blind Bartimaeus. He heard Jesus was passing by, and he cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And you know what the Amplified Bible says? Now, exclamation mark. Now. Now, this is how we are. I've taught on that scripture, I don't know how many times. Taught on it about three weeks ago. Have read the scripture, I don't know how many times. And only last week did I see the word now. Don't ever think that the Bible's gonna get older. There's nothing in there. Just because you got it underlined, that don't mean you've seen it all. And they tried to get him to be quiet. Be quiet, be quiet, calm down. And the Bible says that he cried out all the more, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me now. <laughs> so I'm using that now. David prayed in Psalms, Lord, send prosperity now. <laughs> 
Do you want God to help you in five years or now? And I think most of us would not even feel right praying like that. Well, I can't demand that God do it now. Well, I'm not demanding, but I'm going to ask. How about now? Now would be good. How many of you think now is good? Okay. I do think sometimes that we just, we're not like, I don't know, you know, we think hope is, well, I, I hope maybe someday, uh, maybe, no, have mercy on me now. <laughs> Heal me now. If you don't get it today, get up again tomorrow. Now. That's an anointed word. The mind of the flesh is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. Do you know that's the place where most people live? Even though people are born again and love God and go to church, I lived in that area of sense and reason for I don't know how many years. And I was walking in the mind of the flesh. I had the mind of Christ, but I wasn't using that. I was walking in the mind of the flesh. But Romans 8, 6 also says, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. Well, if we want our lives to be full of faith, then they must also be full of hope. The two go hand in hand, and we really can't have one without the other. We need to believe that God is working in our lives every day, even if we don't see the results of it yet. Insurgency have gone around Iraq, persecuting Christians, forcing them to leave their villages, their homes, their businesses. Many of those families have seen their children abducted, their husbands being killed right there in front of them. The Iraqi Christians are persecuted intentionally in Iraq. So all the families are leaving. The majority has come to Lebanon because they feel safe, because there's a big Christian community. When we looked around, uh, and uh, saw the need uh, of the Iraqis, we felt the Lord is leading us to the target this group of people with the love and compassion we can provide. Hand of Hope was the first ministry to come alongside with us. Hand of Hope said, well, we want to be the hand of Jesus to the broken world of Lebanon. Joyce Meyer uh, makes this happen. Joyce Meyer uh, supports the Heart for Lebanon Iraqi project. So all the food we buy, uh, if it was the snacks, the lunch, the trips we do, the camps, the retreats, all of that, and alone we cannot do it because it's a big burden and it's high expense. And uh, they want to help us bless the Iraqi refugees by that. So we feel cared and loved by that as well. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl partner.